What's up guys, this is One UX One. Today we're answering the question, how do you know which UX research method to use and when? Well, I'm going to tell you all about that. But don't forget to click the subscription and notifications so I can help you become a great UX researcher or UX designer. So how do you know which method is the best one to use? UX research methods depend on the circumstances, what phase your project is in, whether that's discovery, i.e. the beginning where you don't actually know much about what the user needs are yet and it's the early days so that type of phase is where you really want to find out mm, what do users think of our website what do they think of our service start some qualitative research to get the feelings of the users how do they feel what they're thinking then you also want some quantitative data you want to know the numbers what percentage of users like our website? Are they satisfied with what they see? Is this what they expect to see? All of that. What would they change? Is there anything missing on the page or the service? So that is discovery. In that phase, I recommend in-depth interviews more and focus groups. And one more thing, you want to do some surveys because surveys will capture lots of feedback and you can do that with apps like Hotjar or Qualtrix and capture feedback from thousands or tens of thousands of users and they will tell you what's wrong with the service what do we need to change the other time you may want to do testing like that in-depth interviews surveys focus groups is when a project is on a phase where they know what they want to do for example if mcdonald's wants to now change their menu and ordering on their app. I don't recommend McDonald's for food. It's very unhealthy, but let's give you an example of anywhere where there's a menu. If McDonald's want to change that menu and improve it and they want to do a discovery on that, they'll ask you, right, we want to build a new app, a faster, quicker way to order the burgers, shakes and drinks, for example. And your job is to find out what that looks like. What do users want? What they're expecting? and how can you make it easy? So you would go out and do an ethnographic field study. So you'd go to the McDonald's and interview people that are eating. So you could offer them an incentive, maybe $20, $30, tell them what you're doing, be transparent, tell them why you're here and say, right, guys, um, we want to know how we can improve that experience. So you ask them, what was your experience like with checking out and buying your drink and your burger and your fries? And they'll tell you, you note that down, you may ask them for permission to record it. So that discovery phase is a lot about in-depth interviews, really meeting the end user. The other methods for other phases like alpha and beta. So as you progress in a project, different phases will give you different opportunities to use different methods. So when you get to the next stage, once you build an early wireframe prototype with a UX designer, or UX researcher or developer, you build something on things like a Heroku app, Figma or Sketch. Now you've got something to work with. How are you going to test that? Again, you can book in remote interviews and interview users. You can have a focus group online and test with those users on a focus group. What you can do is build up a database of users and then you can decide what you want to test and how. So you can do the interviews. You can, again, do servers at this stage, but you also want to test the design. So you maybe want to do an A, B test. So you have an A version of that menu and then a B version of that menu. What I want to know is which type of testing is needed for capturing the attitudes of users and the behavior. So we call it attitudinal testing and behavioral testing. So as you go in from discovery to beta and the early stages of a project, you want more attitudinal research. So the testing that you do at that phase is different to the behavioral research that you need. I.e. once you've got something that they can test, it's a prototype, something they can click and play around with, then it's a behavioral data you need. So what you need in the beginning is methods that capture that empathy. So getting the voice, a lot of qualitative data you need. You also need quantitative data that's obviously helpful, but you really want to hear 
frustration, those pain points, the annoyances, the friction, like the anger they may have, or they may have a complaint about something has been missing from the website or app for years. And they say, why can't you do it this way? Why can't you do it better? Whereas once you have built something to show them and test with them, then it's the behavioral testing that you need more of. Now, at the time of behavioral testing, i.e. now you've got something that's really improved, it's a better version of that website, then you want to do more card sorting, tree testing. So tree testing, checking that just like a tree, the branches, is, is it laid out in the correct information architecture, the layout, or you want card sorting to group things correctly. So imagine like a furniture store like Ikea, they'll want to put beds in one section. They want to put the kitchen equipment in one section of the kitchen furniture, and they want to have garden equipment in one. So how do you card sort? You want to understand from users how they group things, how they think, what their mental mode is about that. So you'll be testing to see, well, how do users see it? Not maybe what we think. So for example, a vase, does a vase go in living room or does vase go in the garden equipment? Because you can have a vase in the living room or a garden. So you want to card sort that and that's behavioral. Also, you might want to do diary studies. So diary studies is something to capture the behavioral attitudes of users. So what you want to understand with the behavior is what are they doing with your app? So let's say you're at an advanced stage, like beta, private beta phase. So this is coming towards live, the final product. What you want to do is test and see if users, they are able to tell you on a daily basis when they're using it, literally with a diary, it could be pen and paper, be word document it could be an app and they write down right monday 9 a.m tried to log in unable to log in this was the error message a 404 error page this happened the page crashed there was a bug here so they really want to understand what's wrong with the website in the real world when it's almost ready it's almost a finished product that's behavioral also you might do kpi so you might measure the time on task so the old website used to take 30 seconds to, i.e. do some shopping, pick up a shirt, pick up some trousers, check out, it used to take that long. And the new one should be quicker. It should take 10 seconds to be able to select your item, go to the basket and go to the shopping cart. So that's the difference. That is behavioral. You want to measure that as a success KPI. A key performance indicator, another one might be the sus scale so you might want to measure things in terms of customer satisfaction and test things even with things like net promoter score so how many people are passive how many are promoters how many detractors so how many people passively support your product and say this is great how many are passive they're neither here neither there they can't really make their mind up they're not sure and how many are detractors that actually hate your product I would actually tell others that this is terrible or just don't like it. So those kind of skills and that type of testing is at the end phase, which is behavioral. So you want to be able to know the difference in all of these stages, whether it's alpha, beta, private beta, public beta, live, any of these phases, you also will take qualitative and quantitative, but in different amounts, depending on who wants to know what, what do they actually need to build the service? And understand that so once you understand what users need you can build according to that so you can put in those measures those types of tests that will help users understand what you want from them and then you extract that data synthesize it analyze it feed it back to the team once the team know that you can do that you start to really grow in your ux research career because people now understand this person can get us the data we need and get it quickly, on time, recruit the right users, the right personas, the right type of people for each phase as well. So in the beginning, you may interview just your own stakeholders or SMEs, subject matter experts. But later on, you may need to interview candidates from the public or users or from the company's database of their customers. So all these phases vary and when you need to test what. Don't forget to put any other questions you have so I can create more videos for you and subscribe and click the link below to 
get any help from me in the comment section, ask any question you have so I can reply to you personally and help you on your UX journey. Now, one more thing about UX research testing, you need to be able to constantly learn and be a student of UX research, so constantly learning new subjects, new testing methods, new apps. And the more you learn, the more you study, the better you'll become at helping companies grow their products, increase their customer loyalty and their customer satisfaction. So the more you're able to do that, you are the key link between everybody. So the UX researcher is a person that goes between the developers, the C-suite managers, other UX designers, UX researchers, the whole team. You bond everyone because you have the knowledge of the user and that's what everybody needs to grow the product and make it a better product for everyone. Hope you enjoyed that video. I'll see you in the next one. This is one next one.